Hi, I'm James and I'm going to show you how we find exoplanets. Those are planets around other stars. So we're on the island of La Palma at the minute, uh, which is in the Canary Islands. And here we have a, a transiting exoplanet instrument that surveys a large area of the sky. So this is Super Wasp and this is the Northern Hemisphere installation. All right, you're going to show me how you find these planets? So this is Super Wasp's enclosure and in this part is the the computer room where we have all of the computers that control the telescope and push the data back to the universities in the UK. And in the, the other room is the actual telescope itself. So this is SuperWASP itself. It is a collection of eight cameras, uh, each using a, a wide field sports photography lens to survey a large area of sky looking for planets which uh, transit their star. Uh, and as the planet transits the star, it causes a slight dip in the brightness of the star, and this is the signature we look for. Each camera looks at several hundred thousand stars, um, but then we have a, a large cluster of computers back in the UK, which reduces the data and monitors the brightness of each star individually. Uh, and, and over time, you'll see the, the dip in the star that has the planets. These are Canon 200 millimeter sports photography lenses. They got, you see the guys at the football matches with these huge lenses for taking pictures of the stars, the football stars. And it's the same thing. Each night it starts up on its own robotically and it will go around surveying the field that it's been asked to survey that night and it will slew to that position and take a few images and then slew to the next position and repeat the cycle all night. And sometimes we, when we want very accurate photometry, we make it observe one field all night. So it stays in, it just follows one position all night, uh, taking lots and lots of images. So if we can go, we can go in here and I can show you what, what actually we see. This is uh, one of the planets discovered by SuperWASP. This is WASP-12. So what we've got here is a plot of the light from the star over, over time. And you can see here that the light is fairly constant. And then as the planet moves in front of the star, it blocks out a portion of the light. Just like you can see less light as my hand passes in front of the, the lamp in front of us. This signal can be caused by lots of different objects, not always planets. It can be a small star or three stars moving in a different orbit. So we, we first move to a small telescope which can follow up this single star and tell us whether it's um, a planet or not. And I can show you that type of telescope now. Here I'm going to open up the dome for the, for the telescope next door. The next step in the process is to take a, a better light curve of the object. And now we have this, uh, it's a slightly larger telescope which looks at a smaller patch of sky and you do much better photometry. After this stage, if it still looks like a planetary uh, signal, we can go again then to something slightly larger again. So this, this small telescope has only been installed last, it was only installed last year. And this, our new one meter telescope is still being commissioned at the minute and it will run in the, in the same mode of operation as SuperWASP where um, no one will be here and it will robotically observe all the targets that SuperWASP gives it. So with this telescope we plan to do really really high precision photometry in two colours so we can get a a light curve of the star of the planet transiting uh, uh, at a red wavelength and at a blue wavelength. And this way you can look for changes in the shape of the transit and infer something about its atmosphere. And then from this stage, as I said before, we would go to one of the other telescopes like the Knot and do spectroscopy, where you look for the wobble that this planet puts on the star as it's orbiting. 